Hi, today we're going to be looking at this 7 inch reverse monitor. Now a viewer called Koos sent me this and what he said was he's had a few of these monitors and it starts off where the screen start flashes randomly and then they won't turn on at all after about a year. So let's plug it in. We'll connect up the bench power supply. We'll see what it's doing and then hopefully we'll see if we can repair it. So I've got a little filter and adapter thing here. I'll just plug this lead into here and I'll hook it up with the bench power supply. So I've got the bench power supply set to 13.8 volts at 1 amp. Find the negative wire there. Right, I'll just switch the bench power supply on. I'm just trying to keep these leads out of the way. Right, so it's the bench power supply on. And let's just see it brief, briefly flash AV1 there. And then the standby lights coming back on. So it seems to be trying to power up and then shutting back down. Right, so that's the fault. Now judging by the symptoms, I'm wondering if it's something like a capacitor because it seems to be a progressive failure. So over time it seems to be getting worse and worse until the point where it does this. So I'm thinking capacitors. Right, I'll just switch this bench power supply off. We'll disconnect this and we'll see how it comes apart. This doesn't want to come back apart, and there we go. So it looks like it clips into this bezel here first, I think. So let's see if we can get this bezel off. So let's grab a small flat screwdriver. There we go, I've got that off now. And it looks like we've got a couple of Phillips screws there and I don't know if we've, I've got to undo any of these ones, probably going to have to undo that cable grip there. Let's undo these ones first. Right, I'm just going to grab a little spudgeon tool. Let's try one of these. I think that's it. Right, what we've got in here then? Let's just zoom down a bit. So this is where the power cable comes in. So we've got a power supply round about here. I'm guessing that might be an audio amp. Let's just see if that's where the speaker goes to. Uh, the speaker actually goes to that connector there. But yes. It probably goes to these sockets and then off to the speaker because there's a headphone jack on the front. So that looks like an audio amp, it looks like a stereo audio amp, but it looks like they're only using one side of it, I guess. It looks like that could be possibly for a remote control sensor, which is probably wired to the front panel here instead. So I think the problem is going to be around here somewhere. I mean that capacitor possibly may be slightly swollen, I don't know. I'm not sure how this board comes out, it looks like it's just velcroed or something to the actual LCD display here. Yeah, there we go with sticky pads. Right, let's see if we can get some IPA in there. 
We'll see if we get those sticky pads off. I'm going to put too much pressure on it because I don't want to try and damage the display. I think the IP is having an effect just rather slowly. Let's try this plastic spudger in now. Right, I'll see if I can get this board off. I don't think we'll have much luck with this at the moment. I don't think it's designed to really come apart. Right, one moment please and I'll see if I can get this board off. Right, I've managed to get the board out and it was stuck in by these sticky pads and this bit of cardboard stuff which just came off. So I went upstairs, washed my hands, came back down and it's actually working now. So I guess one of these capacitors are such and such has warmed up. Ooh, that one's hot. Wow. I'm just going to get the thermal camera out, I think. Let's just have a look at that. I'll just zoom down a bit. Yeah, it's about 90 degrees, that capacitor. <laughs> I don't think that's right. <laughs> yeah, that one there. Right, I think we might have found the culprit then, so that might have been an easy one. I'll just switch this thermal camera off. I'm just going to knock the power off to this monitor. So I didn't even have to test anything there. It's quite a straightforward one, this. Let's take that cap out and we'll see what it measures with the test meter. So that's it just there, I'll just try and angle this a bit better so you don't get the glare off the metal of this. Right, let's grab the soldering iron, I'm just going to apply some fresh leaded solder on this first, just to make it a bit easier to remove, so I might just be to pull this straight out if I get some heat on it. Right, there we go, the capacitor removed. So what is this? It is a 100 microfarad at 25 volt. Well, that's what it's supposed to be anyway. Let's just get the peak ESR 70 gold. I'll just zoom out a bit. Let's see if I can clip these rail clips on. Yeah. ESR 24 ohms and the capacitance down to 36. So that capacitor is definitely faulty. Right. I shall go out and see if I can find a suitable replacement. One moment, please. Right, back with the replacement capacitor. But what I've had to do is because this one's a low profile one and if you look at the height of it compared to the replacement I'm worried that'll not be to get the back back on on the monitor. So what I've done is I've put some heat shrink on and my plan is to put it there and then have this sort of bent over so it's going to be across the board like that. So then we shouldn't have the problem of it closing now. And I think I'll also take this capacitor out and check that one, just while we're on. So I'll just bring this a bit further down. I'll just show you the readings of the new capacitor. There we go. 0.59 ohms Right, I need to clear those holes So I'll just go and get the solder sucker We'll put a bit of flux on here, we'll just remove the solder from there 
I'm just going to apply a bit of flux first. And that one's been a bit of a pain to clear. Let's try it from the top. Might add some fresh solder as well. Sort of that back up. And I'll just snip off these excess legs there. Right, so that should okay like that right let's take this one out we'll just check we'll just check the value of this one I'll just see if I can pull that one out as well right what's this one 10 volt at 220 yeah that one seems okay so I think just the one capacitor then so I'll just pop this back in planning on doing now then is I'm just going to try and keep this wire from moving I'll just put something heavy on there so keep that in place we'll switch it on we'll see if the backlight or whatever starts flashing or it goes on and off or whatever it was doing before so I'm just going to put the power on now and it looks like it's came straight on I don't know if you can see that there see it's AV1 let's try the standby and the standby lights came on, we'll try power on and it's came straight on so I think what we'll do next, we'll just get the thermal camera out again and we'll just see what the temperature of that capacitor is and I'll just zoom down a bit and as you can see there it's about 29 degrees bit of a contrast from 90 degrees and by the way this is the Kuwait's KTI W02 thermal camera Nothing really else seems to be getting hot. It looks like the little voltage converter chip's getting a bit warm there, but that's to be expected. Looks to be about 60 degrees or so. Well, the capacitor's hardly getting any heat at all now, which is good. Right, so I'll see if I can secure this board. I'll try reassembling it and then we'll give it a test with some video signal and see if it lights up properly. So I was looking around for something that would give us a composite video signal because most of the stuff I've got now is HDMI and I spotted the old Sony PlayStation here so I thought we'll hook that up to it and we'll see how we get on with that so I'll just switch it on and if you're wondering what the wires are sticking out the back for they go to a serial port inside which is for serial debug and you can also use it as a software development system or SDK software development kit. 
I'll just wait for it to load up. Been that long since I played this, I forgot how to play it now. So I'm sure you can make your hair go around as a helicopter type thing. So, a nice quick and easy repair on this one. Just a capacitor. Right, all seems to be working okay now. So, if you enjoyed this video, please give it the thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comment section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.